One of the John Locke Foundation's researchers has a new role in the area of civil rights, and he joins us now to explain. John Guzay is Senior Fellow in Legal Studies at the John Locke Foundation. And John, you've recently been appointed to a two-year term for the North Carolina State Advisory Committee to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. For those who don't know, what is this Commission on Civil Rights all about? Well, the commission was created in 1957 uh, under uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1957. This was back during the Eisenhower administration. Its mission then and still is to provide advice and uh, suggestions to Congress, to the president, I guess to the judiciary too, to all the federal government as in terms of what are the problems with civil rights in this country, what needs to be done to improve the situation. So long history for this group, and you are going to be part of a North Carolina state group that's going to be advising this federal group. What what does the advisory committee do? So like a lot of these federal commissions, there's authorizing legislation. I think it was passed in the 70s maybe to set up state advisory groups that could provide more local input to the commission itself. Um, they Each state can do its own research, find out what the problems are in their state, and uh, provide reports that go up to the commission. Then the commission decides what, if anything, it wants to report to the other government agencies on about the problem. How did you get involved in this? Well, it's kind of interesting. I, uh, I didn't even know about this commission until probably maybe five or six years ago when I started noticing some of the reports they were releasing. This was back during the Obama administration. And the Frankly, the commission at that time was packed with pretty people were pretty far to the left, um, pretty much what we would now call woke ideologues. I wasn't at all happy about the work the commission was doing, and I wrote some very critical pieces about it. But there was one member in particular. Her name is Gail Harriet. She teaches law at, uh, uh, at a law school in San Diego, and she was great. She would be writing uh, dissenting opinions to one report after another, saying exactly what I thought needed to be said. Um, she has actually written to say she thinks this commission, in spite of all the questionable reports it has issued in recent years, has been a valuable thing over the years. And because I admire her so much and the work she's done on the commission, when I got a message from someone in her office asking if I would apply for membership to the State Advisory Committee, I was happy to do it. So there's a State Advisory Committee that advises the U.S. Commission. Uh, getting this appointment, what do you expect you're going to be doing? Well, I first thing I have to do is take a federal ethics course. Uh, and before that, I guess I can't even be party to any meetings. But once that's happened, of course, I'll be attending the meetings and um, doing whatever they ask me to do in the way of helping with the projects that are underway. But I, I've also got the opportunity, if I want to take it, to make proposals about things that I think the uh, committee ought to undertake. I haven't frankly decided whether or not I'm going to do that, but that's a possibility. Even if I don't, though, I think that it will be useful to have an alternative point of view because, frankly, I've, I've seen the work that um, the commission has done over the years. I've also given testimony before at least one committee in another state, and I think there is still a very strong tendency to be biased towards a certain point of view about civil rights in this country, and I don't think it's the right point of view. Done well. Could this commission be a valuable group? Could it be doing some good, worthwhile things? Well, Professor Harriet says it has and it could, so I believe her. And I think that's clearly true. I mean, civil rights are very important. I don't think that very many uh, people, I don't know about the, at the commission level, but certainly at the local level, have thought this through as much as they ought to. But we really have two kinds of rights in this country, at least. One of them, of course, are what? Some of us call our natural rights things like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are given to us by God or by nature, depending on how you look at it. But we also have a lot of rights that do come from, our, from the fact that we're participating with others in a, in a society that's governed by civil laws. And some of those civil rights that are important are the right to vote, uh, the right to the equal protection of the laws, the right to due process of law, and so on, the right to confront witnesses against you if you're charged with a crime. All these things are civil rights, and they're all very important. Sometimes I think people get a little confused, and they think civil rights is all about simply helping African Americans or other minority groups that might have suffered um, discrimination in the past, and that's certainly part of it, but it's more than that. We have lots of civil rights in this country, including, for example, the right to free speech, 
um, that are under attack right now. And so to the extent that we can bring those to people's attention and help focus the federal government on its duty, which is to defend those rights, that will be good. Now, I know you, you're not going to approach this with the idea of being mean-spirited or nasty in your dealings with other people. Do you hope that as you're meeting with folks who might have far different views from you about civil rights and these related issues, that if you don't reach common agreement, at least there will be more understanding of these various views? I do think that. In fact, I have a couple reasons to think it's true. One is that I I think I mentioned I gave some testimony in the past before a different state's uh, committee, and that was about uh, a, a topic I'm interested in, which is civil asset forfeiture. During the question and answer period, it became clear that most members of that committee were only interested in this issue to the extent that um, African Americans might be disproportionately affected or disparately disparately affected by these abuses. I made the point that that's not, I mean, that may be the case, but that's not the only reason we should be interested in this. We all have due process rights, and it's bad for anybody's due process rights to be violated. So I was a little bit ganged up on by the members of that committee, but afterwards I heard from email from one member who said, you know, I think you're right. You made a very good point. We're glad you were there. So I think that can happen. And the other reason I think it's possible is because I've spoken to uh, a couple of people who were on our North Carolina Advisory Committee in the past, conservatives and or libertarians like me, and they've, they've also said that it takes a while sometimes to persuade the other members that you're speaking in good faith, but you can get past the initial suspicion and then you can make a positive contribution. John Guzet is Senior Fellow in Legal Studies at the John Locke Foundation and now a member of the North Carolina State Advisory Committee to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mitch.